Welcome to our quick demo on the Verizon eBonding integration with ServiceNow.com. The Verizon eBonding integration is essentially an incident integration between ServiceNow and Verizon eBonding Business Services. It is a bi directional integration, meaning changes can happen both on the ServiceNow side as well as the Verizon side, and they'll be reflected in both, uh, in both systems. The plugin supports uh, the concept of both reactive tickets as well as proactive tickets in the Verizon system. A reactive ticket is essentially tickets that are initiated from the customer, from uh, the customer using ServiceNow. Uh, these tickets are created as an incident in your ServiceNow.com instance. Uh, proactive tickets, on the other hand, are tickets that were initiated from the Verizon uh, system. These are tickets that were created in the Verizon system and show up in your ServiceNow instance. We support both types of tickets in this integration. While this integration is a plugin and can be enabled through customer support or through your implementation consultant, it is one that does require some time in configuration. You will be working with uh, your Verizon Business Services representatives to jointly set up and configure and test uh, this plugin before you put it in production. We're going to first cover the situation of a reactive ticket uh, in the integration. These are tickets that are created within ServiceNow and appear in Verizon. In order to create a reactive ticket, we're going to launch the Create New Incident window and come up with a new incident form. The, we're going to select the category to be VZE bonding. This tells our integration that this is an, a ticket that we're going to send to Verizon and e-bond this ticket. This is that, that text VZE bonding is configurable, which we'll show later in the demo. Once this is selected, the subcategory field is filled with error codes uh, that, that belong to Verizon. So we're just going to uh, say that it's bouncing. Now, when, our, when we are doing an e-bonding ticket, the configuration item field becomes uh, required or mandatory because all of our e-bonding tickets should correspond with, uh, with a, a circuit or some other asset that's managed by Verizon. So we're going to uh, choose the circuit that's giving us the problems. We're going to give the assignment group uh, just service desk. I'm sure you, your organization will have your own assignment groups uh, for that. And um, because this is a e-bonding integration, this field shows up released for a test. This field tells Verizon uh, whether or not they can down that circuit or down that item uh, to test for it. By default, we're going to say do not test, meaning do not, do not down the circuit, we still need it. Uh, but you can set it to test this immediately, which means that you're giving Verizon the, the um, permission to turn off your circuit or down that item that's causing the problem anytime. Uh, you can also schedule a future uh, permission saying, okay, you can down this, but just not right now. You can down this uh, on a date and time that I specify. Let's say uh, October 19th. Uh, you can down it at that time. Now we're going to give it a short description. We're going to say that the circuit is bouncing and is not stable and we're going to submit our ticket. The ticket creations on the Verizon side, and the, the integration happens asynchronously, meaning that once you've created this ticket, it will take a few minutes to e-bond because the system is going to wait until there's a free resource, and then it's going to send the SOAP request off to Verizon. But once it comes back, it'll take you know one or two minutes at the most. You can go back into your ticket and look down in the, in the activity section in the activity section, you're going to see that uh, we attempted to call Verizon's create ticket method. And then we get a message saying that uh, the, correct, the create ticket was sent to Verizon successfully. And that we got uh, the Verizon ticket number back. If your company exposes the correlation ID field or a similar field, this field by default out of the box will receive the corresponding Verizon ticket number for your incident. So in this case, this is Verizon's ticket number for this incident. 
It is also important to note that if we are not successful in our communication with Verizon, we will try a configurable number of times. For example, if we take this incident down here, uh, this was a different inc this incident than the one we just created, but in this incident, um, we attempted to call Verizon and, and that communication failed. And we retried about every minute subsequently until we reached our maximum number that we had set to retry, which in this case was three times. I forced this to fail so that uh, we could see kind of what that would look like. If it does succeed, then it'll give you the create ticket was successful uh, after a certain number of retries. The number of retries is configurable, as well as the amount of time you want to wait between retries, and as well also as what things you consider an error and need to retry up. Now if we go back to the ticket that we originally created in this demo and let's let's demonstrate how we can add a comment uh, in the ticket directed at the Verizon people. So we'll just say hello uh, can you see my comments? Have you looked in looked into this issue? and we're going to save that ticket. This will tell the integration because we sent a comment and this is an eBonda ticket. We're going to send a SOAP request out to Verizon and it's going to post our comment on the corresponding ticket uh, at the Verizon end. So they can respond back to us and we can have a dialogue. We can come back into our ticket and review the activity to see if we've gotten a response. So as you can see here, here's the comment that we made and um, here's the system telling us that we were able to send that comment to Verizon. And it looks like, you know, a few minutes later we got a response from the Verizon side saying yes, we're reviewing it as we speak and it looks like uh, a more serious issue, we're going to move your ticket to a priority two. So uh, we'll assume that they've moved that ticket to a priority two on their side. So we'll just reload our form and take a look and, and there it is. The priority is now set to two as it was set to two in the Verizon system. And uh, we also have a record of that saying that the priority was moved from a five to a two. Now let's say that Verizon has figured out the problem with the circuit and they've resolved that problem and they've marked the ticket resolved in their system uh, as well. Reload our form or come back into the incident and as you can see here we have a resolved by Verizon as our incident state and in the activity uh, we have the, clo the closed information of when they did that as well as their comment that they have now fixed the problem and it appears to be stable. Now let's cover the proactive ticket scenario where tickets are created within the Verizon system and show up within ServiceNow. Now we'll refresh our browser, our incident list, and see if Verizon has created any tickets that we did not create. So it looks like we found a critical ticket. Let's open that up. This, criti this critical ticket was created by the Verizon system, and it was created in their system, and it was e-bonded with ServiceNow and that ticket uh, got created into our system. There's the corresponding ticket number in the Verizon system. So if we send a comment to them just saying will we get a replacement and we'll hit save. Now that we hit save we wait a few minutes and we'll let's say that Verizon the Verizon tech has already responded to uh, our comment, our question, so we can just reload our incident form and scroll down and you can see that our comment was sent successfully they received it and they commented on the ticket as well that our replacement would be available in about five minutes that's all I'm really going to show on the uh, proactive ticket because the integration is the same if, if they mark it resolved it'll be resolved uh, in our ticket so it's the same as, as what happens with the uh, reactive ticket as well now that we've shown you the user experience of the Verizon eBonding integration with ServiceNow, let's talk about the architecture, the underlying uh, mechanisms that make this work. Um, first of all, we'll, we'll have the ServiceNow side over here on the left, 
and Verizon Business uh, over here on the right. Uh, the incident is the record that we're integrating with. Uh, when it's marked as a category of e-bonding, uh, any changes to that incident uh, will kick off a business rule, which if it's a qualifying change, will send that uh, send the appropriate web service uh, request to our ECCQ. Uh, by sending it to the ECCQ, we get a few advantages. One, we do get a queuing feature so that if uh, there's an error or the service is unavailable, we have a history of those records, and we also get the retries. Uh, there's retry policies on the ECCQ in the later releases in 2011 that allow you to um, retry if there's errors. So we post to the ECCQ, and when we have a free resource in the system, uh, we'll grab that SOAP request and send it through the SOAP client out to the Internet. The SOAP requests are protected via WS security uh, to get into the Verizon uh, services gateway. This, uh, th this requires that you will need to sign a certificate, a Verizon certificate, and send that along with the request. Uh, information on that is on the wiki. Uh, we send the SOAP request into the gateway and the gateway will perform that authentication and transform our SOAP document and apply that to the correct ticket in the trouble management system. Now when Verizon makes a change to the ticket or creates a ticket, they send a SOAP request uh, to ServiceNow to your instance. Uh, that's intercepted as a scripted web service through a custom WSDL that we have. Uh, once it passes through there, the data is then stored in a web service import set that determines whether we're going to be creating a new incident or whether we're going to be updating an existing incident. And it, it uses the rules that uh, out of the box or you can customize those rules uh, to then apply that data uh, to the corresponding incident. When the Verizon eBonding plugin is installed, there's a Verizon eBonding application that is created. You can search for it uh, here. And uh, there's a number of uh, sec modules inside of that application. The first module is the properties module. And this is where I'd mentioned in the demo that uh, it was the category name was configurable. So when you select the category on the incident, uh, it was v the text was VZ bonding. If you change that category text to something else, uh, you just need to type that text here uh, in this property and, and the system will accept that as the key off for the integration. Uh, this correlation ID uh, field is also Verizon eBonding. Uh, that's the label that gets uh, populated in the correlation display field uh, of the incident uh, once the eBonding has taken place. And so you can have that text be anything you want as long as it's consistent. Uh, you don't change it halfway uh, through using your eBonding integration. You need to try change that at the beginning if you need a change. For most cases, we don't foresee you needing to change that. It's mostly personal preference. Uh, these next fields are fields that are provided to you by Verizon. You get a group ID and a username as well as a password. Those will be used in the web services that makes a call into Verizon. Uh, the next fields are fields that uh, are your contact information for your company uh, to Verizon. So these are individuals that uh, Verizon has contact information to. Modules in the application are as follows. These first two are configuration, the properties and the certificates. The inbound section contains uh, all the components that handle Verizon communication coming inside it, into ServiceNow, including your transform maps. The outbound section it contains all the areas that you'll need to use to customize messages going from ServiceNow into Verizon. And then these last two sections, ETMS product type, ILEC product type, these are the configuration items that Verizon manages. And these will be referenced in your ticket when you create a ticket that goes to Verizon. If you hope to do this integration yourself or hire somebody to do it, uh, there's some skill sets that you probably need to consider that individual to have. First of all, you're going to possibly be modifying SOAP web services and you'll, the person will need to know how to do that as well as understand SOAP communication coming back and forth. Also, since we are using WS Security, that individual will need to be able to sign certificates that they receive from Verizon and store that into ServiceNow. You also need to be able to alter transform maps and work with web service import sets 
work with import set scripts so that you can customize or tailor uh, the incoming data to your needs. Also, you have to have the, the ability to customize business rules as well. And chances are some of your incident form data or settings will not be the same as the out-of-box settings. And so typically customers have to do a few tweaking inside those business rules and import sets. Also, you'll most likely be customizing the forms. Uh, since so many companies modify the incident table, the incident form, uh, some of our, our fields that we bring over don't show up by default. And so you'll need to go in and, and have those fields show up and put them where you want them to go. There are a couple things I'd like to call out that you'd need to consider when performing this integration. Uh, first of all, is your, tick, is your incident logging process uh, compatible with the process that was shown here? Do you use categories? Uh, would it be a problem exposing the category field? Would it be a problem having the subcategory field be populated with uh, closed codes or error codes from the Verizon side? Uh, any of these processes that we demoed in in this video need to be considered if they're compatible with you or not. If they are, then typically you'll have fewer customizations you'll need to make to this plugin. If your incident logging process is significantly different or has different requirements, uh, you may have a bigger customization on your hand and so you'll need to scope that out appropriately. Uh, also, you'll need to consider your form and field customizations. Do your drop downs have out of the box values? If they do not, then chances are you're going to have to tweak some of the business rules uh, or script include transform maps to match up your, your values in your drop down uh, menus, such as incident state uh, and other drop downs, such as that. So, that's one thing to also consider when you're scoping out this product project. I'd like to thank you for attending this demo of the Verizon eBonding integration with ServiceNow.com.